Hey, everybody, welcome. Come on in. Okay. Jeff, you're on. Oh, my goodness. Jeff was a doctor at a hospital in Brooklyn throughout the COVID crisis, and I guess he's taken it to heart. <laughs> you folks are dangerous. Can everybody hear me? So um, my fellow Americans and lovers of Coney Island, good evening. I'm Jeff Birnbaum, chairman of the board of directors of Coney Island USA. I am not Dick Zegan's younger brother, although I do credit Dick with getting my fashion sense. For those of you who don't know me, yes, in real life, I am a real physician. I'm one of those folks fighting COVID on the front lines for the past three months. So it's an extreme honor to welcome you all to, to, welcome you all to Coney Allen USA's first annual Maskey Awards. With love, creativity, and great commitment, our mask contestants are going to kick coronavirus in the ass and help us sustain the spirit of fun that Coney Allen USA brings to us all. And if you believe that, just go hit the donate button. So <laughs> sit back, have a drink, and prepare to be dazzled. And now to get to my first introduction of the evening, many of you know our first guest as the Oscar-winning star of My Cousin Vinny, but I first fell in love with her in her debut performance in The Toxic Avenger. Ladies and gentlemen, Marisa Tomei. Hi. Hi. Hello. Welcome to Maskies. Keep masking. Stay safe. Thank you, Marissa. Our second guest is a true friend to Coney Allen USA, a resident of Coney Allen for over 30 years, who currently represents us in the New York State Assembly. I'd like to welcome New York State Assemblywoman Mathilde Frontis. Hi everyone, it's Assemblywoman Mathilde Frontis. I wanna thank everyone for participating in this year's mass design competition sponsored by Coney Island USA. I had such a great time being a judge this year and I wanna say a hearty congratulations to all of tonight's winners. Good job. Thank you to assembly member Matilda Frontis. These are all great friends of Coney Island's. So the put on a funny face mask design contest presented by Spectrum News New York One is finally over, kaput. It's time for the award ceremony. It is the online party we call the maskies. I can't tell you how many times in the last week I have had to stop autocorrect from fixing that word. <coughs> to kick things off, I am proud to announce a COVID, oh wait, I said this already. Oh God. Anyway, welcome to the Maskies. Um, the contest actually came about after my spouse, Sherry Davis, started making masks for friends and neighbors. Watching her work so hard and swap notes with mask makers all around the country, I thought these people should be honored. And what better way to honor them than a contest? After that, it just kind of took off. Once our wonderful friends at Spectrum News New York One signed on, we knew we had something really good, but we still didn't know how great it could actually become. I mean, we knew that with the Mermaid Parade DNA inside the mask contest, it was gonna be creative, but I just didn't, none of us imagined the levels of genius that it actually achieved. Um, the art created for the contest has been nothing short of spectacular and just as important and a community has developed around the contest. And we look really, we really all look forward to, everybody at Coney Island looks forward to continuing our relationship with you, with all of you who participated and everybody who just loved it. 
and finally, tonight we're going to learn who actually won. But please, every all contestants should know that you've already won something much more important. I know this is, sounds like a platitude, but it's more important than the award. You demonstrated positivity, creativity, humor, and ingenuity in the face of an absolute disaster. You have won our hearts. You made the world a better place. Good luck to everyone. Now, our first category was added after community input, speaking of community. It's the best use of upcycled materials category, and it recognizes the mask, the mask makers who creatively reused existing materials to make their masks. I'm happy to introduce radio star, podcaster extraordinaire, and the great voice of the Mermaid Parade, Chris T, to present the award. There he is, Chris. You're on, Chris. Hey, it's me, Christy, voice of the Mermaid Parade. And I'm very glad to be here with you for the Maskies, the first ever Maskies. This is going to be good. This is going to be fun. And congratulations to all of you who entered and to uh, those of you who, uh, even though you are socially distant from us right now, remain in our hearts here at Coney Island, USA. I have been the voice of the Mermaid Parade since 1987. And yes, there may not be a real Mermaid Parade this year, but we carry on nonetheless. The Mermaid Parade, ladies and gentlemen, resides in our hearts. It is now my pleasure to announce the six nominees for the best use of upcycled material in a mask. This is a great category because we should all be Recycling, reducing, and reusing. Correct? So uh, here we go. First up, Diane Rents, R-E-N-T-Z, out of Orlando, Florida. Diane Rents, out of Orlando, Florida. Look at this. This is beautiful. How do you do it, Diane? I would like to know. We also want to thank Joanna Tankel out of uh, New York, New York. Here's a name that is familiar to me, Rita Frazier Normandu. When I started doing the Mermaid Parade, Ray Normandu was co MC of the parade. Let's see if uh, we've got Misty Humphrey from Las Vegas, Nevada's mask somewhere up there. Is that Misty's? Oh. You know, they say play Misty for me. That's the big radio thing. So, uh, Melanie Groves, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Very uh, patriotic design there from Melanie. And last but not least, Tatiana Elena out of Brooklyn. Tatiana, where is your mask? Is that it? Oh, that's also lovely. I am digging each and every one of these. And now... Without any further ado, here are your winners. In third place, Diane Rents with the upcycled jeans, quilted plague doctor mask. All right. In second place, Misty Humphrey with her crown royal mask. And in first place, and this is a really interesting mask, Melanie Groves, World War II Parachute Silk and Denim. Now, uh, Melanie, are you with us? And would you like to say a few words? I would. Thank you so much. Thank you for this competition, this wonderful coming together of people making masks. This mask was really special for our community. Um, a, a family of a World War II veteran um, came up to me with this parachute silk that he had parachuted um, into Germany. Uh, he was a surgeon during World War II, and they couldn't think of any other many better way to use that material that they'd kept as a memento for this man than to help save lives of other veterans. 
So we were able to take that parachute silk and make it into masks for veterans in our community. So it was a really beautiful gift. It's a beautiful mask. Congratulations. There is your winner of the upcycled mask category. Let's get a round of applause. So now we're... Let's get a round of applause for Melanie Groves and her World War II parachute silk mask in the upcycled category, silk and denim mask. Thank you again, Melanie. Congratulations to everybody who entered the contest. Thank you so much, Chris T, the voice of the Mermaid Parade. And despite what he says, there will be a Mermaid Parade this year. Now, Lori Anderson has many titles, artist, composer, musician, film director, furniture maker. But if you ask me, her coolest title is Queen Mermaid. Our next category is best historical theme mask. And I'm happy to present Queen Mermaid, Lori Anderson to introduce the nominees. Okay, can you hear me? Sure can. I think I'm here, yeah. All good. Okay, good. Thanks so much for including me in this. It's, uh, uh, the being queen of the parade was the highlight of my life. And it is now my pleasure to announce the six nominees for the best historical mask category. So, Jana Kennedy Heighton from St. Petersburg, Florida. Wow. Anthony Whitaker from New York City. Melanie Groves from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Let's see. Melanie Groves, where is she? There, there we go. Okay. Uh, Nina Urban from Brooklyn. Here it comes. Nina, yeah. And Katie Lou from Brooklyn. And Adrian Benjamin from Isle, Minnesota. Okay. And uh, the winners are third place, Katie Luscom and the Rising Tide Mask. Second place, Jana Kennedy Heightens Dolly's Mustache Mask. Yeah. And first place, Anthony Whitaker. I am still standing. Is Anthony here? Anthony, are you here? You a big cheer. We do not have Anthony. Okay. I'm just going to say a couple of words uh, about Anthony. And Anthony was a ground zero first responder. And on 9-11, a huge 207 foot tall piece of the facade of the South Tower was defiantly still standing. And it has a very profound become a profound and inspirational symbol uh, proclaiming the awesome power of the human spirit to overcome adversity. And you'll notice the distinctive uh, 1XX1 Roman numeral freeze border trim that outlines the mask. Yeah, I am still standing is a powerful effort affirmation and it's an inspirational message that reflects the courage and strength and fortitude and resilience of the citizens of New York and the United States of America. So um, we are now going to give everyone a chance to cheer for Anthony. Ready? Yeah. Okay. 
Thank you so much, Lori. It is, we are so lucky to have you here. It means so much to us. Thank you so much. Our next presenter is a true visionary. When others looked at Coney Island and saw nothing more than a decaying relic of the past, this person saw a legacy worth saving. And more importantly, he imagined a vital future for Coney. Then he did what few visionaries can do. He realized his vision. To present the award, for the best Coney theme mask, I present the permanently unelected mayor of Coney Island, Mr. Dick Ziggin. Woo! Woo! Ed? A little muted. Ed, could you um, unmute Dick, please? Dick, can you try your own unmute button? I just hit unmute. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hey. Hi, NYC. Hi, USA. Hi, CI. Mayor DZ here. Isn't this just like going to a party, finally? Except I didn't go anywhere. Um, I did bring a beer, and I've got popcorn, and pretzels, and water, and I've got a cappuccino. I hope you're all set. Um, I love awards parties. Um, I've got my laptop. I've got my iPhone for breaking news. Um, I'm ready to go. So let's go. It is now my pleasure to announce the six nominees for the Coney Island theme category. Yay. The first nominee Tales of Glory, that Mermaid Parade favorite. Uh, Tales of Glory include members from Brooklyn and all over the country. I mean, all over the country, even Boise. No kidding. Um, the second nominee in the Coney Island theme is Allison, Little Brooklyn Garber obviously from Brooklyn and one of our burlesque favorites at Coney Island, USA. The third nominee from the Bronx, Ruben Santana. Wow. That looks like it lights up and flashes. Um, our fourth nominee, Sabina Malloy from New Jersey, but formerly Brighton Beach, Brooklyn. The next nominee, Jen Green from Bay Ridge. Wow. And our fifth nominee in the Coney Island theme mask is Clash Vicente. Whoa. Okay, those are our masks and the winners are in third place, Class Vicente and the Fury's Revenge. Winner, winner, winner. <laughs> Class, you come to see the Warriors every uh, September when we screen it at the, Folk Fest, at the Film Festival. 
Congratulations, class. You are a winner, winner, winner. The second place category, second place winner goes to Tales of Glory. Spell it out, Mass. Spell it out. Hey, Dick, it's Mark. If you look closely, you'll notice that their masks spell out the Tales of Glory. And then it says, I was too dumb to realize yeah. that. And wow. Then, yep. And then it says afterwards, it said, Mary Are they Mandy. nominated for a special effects uh, masking? <laughs> no, but they had a lot of voters. That's what we noticed. Okay, but they didn't win because there is a first place winner. And the first place winner, ladies and gentlemen, of the Coney Island theme mask is none other than Ruben Santana, the many facets of Coney Island. Ruben, are you here, Ruben? Yay! Congratulations, winner, winner, winner! Yay! Ruben, would you nice like going, to man. Few words. Bravo! Are you guys hearing me? We can. Thank you so much, guys, for the opportunity. And I'm so happy, but I'm more, I uh, want to say thank you to all the first responders out there that gave their best to take care of us during these hard times. That was my inspiration for the math, for the uh, business owners that are going through hard times. That's why I decided to include them in the math, the apple for New York City that represents everybody coming together to help each other through these tough times. So thank you so much, guys. Hey, we're not going to give everyone a chance to cheer for Ruben. Yay, Ruben. 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 So beautiful. So beautiful. Amazing. Wow. Awesome. Yay, amazing. Great beat, Ruben. Ah. <laughs> Ed, slight director's note. You can unmute Chris T. He's been giving us some great background music and I, I think it's been working. Thanks, Chris. A little improvisational. Um, the, next, the next board member is, is, is <clears throat> sorry. Ba -ba -ba -bom. Thank you, Dick. Thank you, Ruben. And the next presenter is a fellow board member of Coney Island USA. And she is the perpetual star, a bright pink star of the Mermaid Parade. More importantly, in this case, she's the one who came up with this category. To present the award for the best formal mask, please welcome Ms. Kate Dale. Hey there. Hey there, all, all of my lovely, lovely friends uh, in Brooklyn and beyond, well beyond. Uh, usually at this time of year, I would be real busy working on my costume this is a past costume but we're we're still we're still waiting later in the summer to get onto that whole mermaid thing um i've enjoyed so much seeing all the great masks from all of the makers and especially close to my heart is the formal category because i love the glamour and the sparkle and boy was i not disappointed with what came up in this fabulous category. <laughs> so hats off. No, I'm leaving it on because roots. Um, <laughs> leaving it on. <laughs> uh, so it's now my pleasure to announce the six nominees in, for the formal mask category. Uh, the six nominees are uh, uh, Ashley Badkey, I hope I'm saying that right, from, uh, from right here in Brooklyn. Uh, Cleo McClure, uh, Cleo's from Los Angeles, beautiful mask. Sister Glamorama Ding Dong, I like saying that, from Kansas City, Missouri. Love it. Uh, and Heather Raquel Phillips from Philadelphia. Oh yeah, well you can you can tell I like that one. Uh, 
Ms. Uh, Jenny Lee Dupuy from Ithaca, New York. All right, and from right back here in Brooklyn, Rose Martin. Oh, yeah. So, see, now this one could have been in the upcycling category also. Uh, excellent masks. I Now, to announce the winners are in third place, Ashley Bedke, Night at the Opera. Oh, look at that. All right, bravo, Ashley. In second place, Heather Raquel Phillips, Be Seen, Not Heard mask. Gorgeous pink bow. I'd wear that. And the first place winner, in first place, Jenny Lee Dupuy, the magpie mask. Jenny, would you uh, would you like to say a few words? Ah. Woo! Woo! Ah, all right. Woo! Hey, you got this is amazing. Um, so this this mask, I made it specifically for the contest because a friend told me about it. And I just wanted to make something really sparkly and happy. And here it is. It's it's like wearing a disco ball. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone who organized this event. This is incredible. And I hope that you go forward with a, like an art auction afterwards. I'd love to be a part of it. Good job, Jenny. <laughs> All right, well, Jenny. Bra Brava. Well, everyone applaud for Jenny and her incredible mask. Woo! Thank you. Woo! Woo! Like Woo! 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 Oh, everyone's yours too. Oh. Woo! Gorgeous. <laughs> Jenny, thank you so much for those wonderful comments. They're inspiring. Um, it's great to be appreciated. I can't say enough how much we appreciated the many masks you, you contributed. And to the community who came up with the idea of an auction, thank you all. It wasn't our idea. And we are going to be talking about a mask auction sometime in the next few weeks. Now, our next presenter is a dear friend of Coney Island, USA. You know her from the golden age of MTV and is the best-selling author who has chronicled the challenges in her life. But we know and love her as a queen mermaid and an enthusiastic booster of Coney Island USA. Here to present the award for best mermaid or Neptune themed mask, Karen Duff Duffy. Hey, thank you everybody. It is my beautiful brothers and sisters of the Empire State. Thank you so much for taking care of yourselves and making the masks. And as a former mermaid queen, I have a tip of my tiara as we announce the six nominees for the Neptune and Mermaid category. So we have Mr. Mike Tillman from Rockford, New Jersey. Blue, blue, blue. We have Ashley Badicky. The Pride of Brooklyn, New York. We have Vanessa Sturmbenz from Woodside. We have Kayla Elorza from New York City. The beautiful Deborah Scotty from New York City. And our very own talented, blooming Rose Martin from Brooklyn. Look at these beauties. I mean, the judges, how could they ever pick one? Well, they didn't, they picked three. So, in third place, I am proud to announce that Kayla Elorza has won with her gaudy mermaid mask. Congratulations and a tip of the TR to you. In second place, it's the talented Mike Tillman's Shape of Water. Thank you very much. Thank you for representing New Jersey. It is a beautiful job. And our first place winner in the Mermaid Neptune category is Deborah Scotty with the Beauty of the Sea mask, which is unbelievable. Thank you so much. And Deborah, would you like to say a few words? I'd love to. Thank you so much. I'm absolutely thrilled to have one first place in this category. I love the Mermaid Parade. I think it's fantastic that you guys held this mask contest. Um, and I am 
utterly, utterly thrilled that my mask um, brought some joy to people during these really incredibly uh, tumultuous times. So um, thank you. Thank you. You are a beauty. Your bright light shines. And thank you all for participating. These were masterpieces. Masterpieces! Yay, Tom! Woo! Woo! Okay, Woo! Tom. Well done. Woo! Oh, Woo! Well done. Great job. Well Moving on. Yeah, could you guys still hear me? Yes. Yes, great. I can't see anything, but I can we hear you. can't see you. All right, well, we go ahead. that's good enough. My voice is the best part. Uh, Thank you so much, Duff. And it is now my honor to introduce a proud Brooklyn girl. Her film and television credits are too long to list, but you've seen this indomitable phenom in everything from Jungle Fever to The Sopranos and right on to Netflix's Luke Cage. Let's hear it for Annabella Sciorra, who will now present the award for Best Kids Mask. Woo! 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 Ow! <laughs> Annabella? Woo! Uh-oh. I unmute every Annabella might be in under a strange name. Ed, can you hear me? All right. So I guess I am going to present the awards for Annabella Sciorra. We, we can't see you, Al. Yeah, it'll work. That's okay. You know, show some of the audience while I do this, Ed. I, I have to restart my computer. I don't want to do that right now. <laughs> so the first. The category is kids. And I want to point out that this is not just masks for kids, it's also masks that would appeal to a kid. So, you guys can still hear me, right? Uh oh. We can hear you. Oh, great. Sure can. Great. Nope. Someone just sent me a text that said I've gone silent. How, How about, about now? I can hear you. We We've never hear lost you. you. We've never lost Good you. We've never lost you. Right. So in the kids category, in the kids ca mm. little technical difficulties, of course, it's my computer. Goes in so in this kids category, the first nominee is Susie Sims Fletcher from Astoria, New York. The second nominee is Cindy Ben from New York City. The next category is from Ohio, Lane McLaughlin from Lakewood, Ohio. Our fourth nominee is Ethan Pitternell from Washington Heights, New York. The next category, the next nominee is Lucy Bobian Paulson from the Bronx. And our final nominee is Jessica Filomino from Brooklyn, New York. And the third place winner is Cindy Ben and the Sonic Mask. Woo! And I know they're here today. Congratulations. Second place. Lane Mc... McLaughlin with the Krabby Mask, all the way from Ohio. So, who has the best kid mask? Well, it's got him a good memory. It's Jessica Filomino from Brooklyn, New York, New York, with the Elephant Mask. Jessica, are you here? Great mask, Jessica. Great mask. Hey. Well, it says Yay! Woo! Woo! Yes! 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 Not here. Oh. I'm going to tell you a little Yay! bit. About Yay! Woo! Beautiful. Here. The mask was made in honor of Jessica's totem, 
the elephant. It has a wire to adjust over the nose and a filter to add protection. The ears and trunks have polyfiber fill to give them that plush 3D effect. The elastic is set to a standard length. The mask was made from scratch and Jessica's teenage daughter is the model. Let's give Jessica a hand. So, you know, we've been having, a, you can show some audience re re shots. That is so of amazing. Oh, all of those masks with all the kids, awesome. Love oh, you. All righty. So, the next category is a little different than everything else we've seen so far. It's a little, right now we've had a lot of fun. It's been whimsical. But when we, when the, when we started this, we also knew masks can be serious lifesavers. So we created a special award to recognize people who have done community service in the form of mass creation. Now we looked at many groups and they have all done extraordinary work. So we ended up with a three-way tie for first. That was the easy decision to make, just give it to everybody. Well, the first winner is, hang on. The Relief Crafters of America. They're a volunteer run group of makers with huge, with hubs around the country that have facilitated, created and distributed an incredibly large number of masks. Beyond addressing our current problem, this group has a history of supporting humans or animals in need by utilizing their members' fiber art skills for good. The next winner is the Smart Sheet Metals Workers Union. This union has been collaborating with the union contractors to produce and donate huge numbers of those aluminum nose strips for the millions of masks being made by volunteer groups across the country, some of who are probably here tonight. The thin and flexible aluminum strips are critical to custom fitting the top of a mask to a user's face, making them more effective, less likely to slip off, and more comfortable to wear. And I know that we made one for Dr. Jeff Birnbaum with one of those sheet metal workers unions. How did that work out, Jeff? Ah, he's showing it off. Best mask ever made. <laughs> Fantastic. Our final winner is the Open Source COVID-19 Medical Supplies Facebook group. This group was formed and within a day had over 35,000 members. It's a place for engineers and others to share promising open source designs for key supplies and ideas for how to work together to find collaborators and to share inspiring stories about response efforts to the global COVID-19 pandemic. They have done plenty of work on masks, in particular on 3D printed masks. But beyond that, their work on everything from face shields to gowns and all the way to actual respirators has been incredible. Now, I know that Danielle or Kimberly from the Relief Crafters are here today. So maybe you guys would like to say a word. Hey, nice to meet you. Yay. <laughs> My unmute. Hi. Hello. Thank you so yeah. much for having us. Um, and we just wanted to thank you so much for the nomination and recognition. And we could not have done this without our members. Um, they drive the group and they're the reason we can accomplish anything at all. Um, and they continue to blow us away and they're so committed to helping others, whether it's animals or humans. And we're just so happy to be able to share this with them. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you guys. Thank you. Bravo ladies, congrats. Congratulations. Well done, thank Woo! you. Woo! Bravi. Great job. So while we're off to these non-normal categories, we have another one, which is the best mass work wearing meme award. So we're gonna go from the serious to the kind of absurd. As we all know, memes carry culture and we think that is through culture that we will get more people to wear masks and more importantly, to wear them properly. 
Well, we never did figure out who made our mini, a winning meme. But someone told us that Motley Crue drummer Tommy Lee's wife made it. I have my doubts. But ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the winning meme. That's got to be spotlighted or it doesn't work. There we go. <laughs> so, what did everyone think of that meme? Good one? All right. Give us some thumbs up. Really good. Very good. Classic. Really good. My favorite. <laughs> yeah, who was Ready. the model? <laughs> Tommy Lee. So we're going to ask um, the next presenter to swallow steel or maybe to eat some cigarettes. But instead, we gave the professor a more important task. <laughs> the next award is a biggie since the artists themselves pick the winners. Here to present the Mask Makers Choice Award is Coney Island's own Adam Realman. Yay! Bravo. All right. Thank you, everybody. Can you hear me? We get a thumbs up on that? We can hear no? you. I can right, hear you. you. Excellent. Okay, well, first of all, I hope that everybody is staying safe and healthy. It's been a pleasure working with our birthday boy, Mark, who really dove in head first in this project. First, let's wish Mark a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Thank you so much. Every day should be my birthday. Oh, man. Oh, happy birthday. Show. Happy birthday! All right, so I also I want whoa. I also want to thank the judges that I personally work with: Lori Anderson, Marissa Tomei, and Garland Jeffries. And I had the pleasure of working with them. They just jumped in as well, and 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 thank you, you know, all so much for that as well as all of the judges. But of course, the mask makers, because it is because of you that we are doing this contest. It's to honor the mask makers, the makers who have contributed their time, their art to this competition. So without further ado, let's take a look at the mask makers choice award finalists right here. From Minneapolis, Minnesota, Melanie Groves. From Wood From Woodside, New York, Vanessa Sturban. Oh, I love that one. From Ridgewood, I'm assuming New York, it doesn't say, but let's assume it's New York. Ridgewood, New York, Jennifer Erin Tavies. And I hope that I'm pronouncing that correctly. Oh, I like that one. Amazing. From San Francisco, California, Sarah Ball. Gorgeous. From Ithaca, New York, Jenny Leigh Duplass. I, I, I might have messed that up, Jenny, and I do apologize for that. And... From Williamsburg, we're assuming it's Brooklyn. Uh -huh. Williamsburg, Brooklyn, Autumn Costner. Wow, look at that one. Wow. And the winners are. I want the one on the left. Third place. Je it, with the clear 2020 beak mask, Jennifer. Aaron Tavy. Hey, good choice. Good choice. Well done. Thank you, Jennifer. With second place, with the cosmic aquatic mask, Sarah Bowl. Good job, Sarah. And the winner of the Mask Makers Choice Award in first place with the bathing beauties mask vanessa 
Sternbin. Oh. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Now, Vanessa, are you around? You if you are, hop on and say a couple of words. Ooh. And if <laughs> she's here, hi everyone. Thank you so much. It's such an honor also to get this award because all of you are so so very talented. It was so nice to do something creative and productive during this time. Thank you for having this. Thank you to everybody who entered and I hope this is gonna make everybody a little bit happier. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you so much, Vanessa. Congratulations, beautiful job. Congratulations, Vanessa. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Hey folks, I wanna just take a little bit of a sideline for a second. We've been joined by someone very special. She missed her opportunity to present, but don't worry, because I was just as good as you could ever be. <laughs> yes, Thank you so and much. she'd like to say a few words, Ms. Annabella Sciorra. Yay! Hi. Hi, I miss everybody. I miss Coney Island the most. It's my home Woo! away from home. And uh, I can't wait to get back there. And I'm so glad you had this contest this year. Um, in lieu of the uh, mermaid parade, even though we are still going to have a mermaid parade, but it's just really nice to, to get all the freaks out making masks. Awesome. I love it. Thank you. Thank you for asking me to be a judge. <laughs> How hard was it to judge? Oh, God, it was so hard. There were so many great masks. It's unbelievable. Did you get oh. my $100? <laughs> no, no, I didn't. Nice woman, ladies and gentlemen. But it's not too late. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you. Thank you, Annabella. And thank you all. So, thank you for shining a light, Annabella. <laughs> oh, hi. Thank you. <laughs> so, as the Chief Justice of the Mermaid Parade, the parade judges are really like part of my family. And by, by that, I mean the inebriated, incompetent, ineffectual uncle who comes to your house for family dinners. Okay. So we gave those ineffectual judges the job of picking the winners for the Judges' Choice Award. And here to present that award is the least competent of all of our judges, Judge Aaron. Yay! <laughs> Hello, everyone in Brooklyn and wherever else you happen to be. <laughs> mm -hmm. on, uh, on March 15, I found myself in my ancestral homeland of Los Angeles, California, being told to stay the fuck at home. And so I am here and I am without any mermaids here. But in solidarity, what I found here in Los Angeles from the occasional Duda parade also canceled Duda Parade and Cinco de Mayo festivities. So I wear that in honor of a mermaid parade. Um, Occasionally you say Duda. I would, it is now my pleasure to announce the six nominees in the judge's choice category. And um, boy, the, uh, the geography is uh, broad on these, but from New York, Natalia's mask. Oh, with a, is that a dog or a cat? It's hard to tell with a mask. That is a dog. Also from New York, S.D. Griffel. That is a rabbit. <laughs> and again from New York, Joanna Tankle. <laughs> and once more from New York, Felipe Salcido. And to break up the New York monotony all the way from Isle, Minnesota, Adrienne Benjamin. And again, New York, Esty Griffel. Second Esty Griffel mask. And the winners are third place. Esty Griffel, Rabbit Mask. Woo! Second place. Good job, Esty. Felipe Salcido, Fish Sideso Freak Mask. And first place, Adrienne Benjamin and her 
Anishinaabe mask. Is Adrian here and able to say a few Beautiful. words? Adrian, did you make it? If she is not here, I, I know a couple of things about, about the mask that I can that I can share about Adrian and the mask. But uh, Adrian is an indigenous artist. Her mask is made. Of, oh, is she here? No. Her mask is made using several different regalia and art techniques used by Ashina Abe, which is the Ojibwe people of, I believe, is that Nigeria? But uh, for today, for various items from ceremony to traditional hey, hey. dress, her her tribe, Milax of oh, this is this is Minnesota, perhaps? I'm. Uh, it's Ojibwe. It is. It's a. It's a. It's a so this is this is a this is a this is a, a, a north. A, 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 Northern Midwest uh, uh, tribal people. Wow, okay. The lax bands of the Ojibwe known for the jingle dress and she added cones to pay homage and respect to that. And we'll now give everyone a chance to cheer for Adrian. Woo! Thank you so much, Judge Aaron. And I'm so sorry Adrian wasn't here. Her contributions were amazing. And if you look closely at that mask, I'll put it on screen for a second, you'll notice the little cones underneath. Um, you, yeah, the cones underneath are representing the jingle dresses and there's amazing beadwork all over that mask. Just a great job. One of my favorites, they're all my favorites. Oh, yes. Our next Thank you, Judge Aaron, suitably incompetent. We appreciate that. Our next award is really special. Spectrum News New York One has been a big supporter of Coney Island USA. And just as importantly, more importantly, they are big supporters of every neighborhood in all five boroughs. In, rec in recognition of this, they have created the One New York Award. And to present that award, I am happy to welcome the coolest television journalist to walk the planet, Mr. Roger Clark. Hey, Roger. I think I got you now. Happy birthday, yes. uh, Mark. Thanks, Roger. Hey, um, yeah, thanks. It's a pleasure to be here. I've, I've been a judge for the Mermaid Parade a couple of times, greatest days of my life. I remember the first time I covered the parade, it was a pouring rain. It was like 2002, 2003. And I remember running out into the street to interview one of the great costumes. And I said to her, I said, how do you get through it with all this rain? And she said, shots. So, yeah. <laughs> Which I was totally on board with at that point, but I had to go back and file my story. I don't think it was a good time to do shots. But anyway, we are really proud to present this uh, great contest this year. The masks are absolutely unbelievable. Uh, One New York means a lot to us. We just started this show, you know, when this all, all this, you know, New York City, we've gone through so much lately. Uh, way back in March, we started the broadcast with Pat Kieran and Jamie Stelter, Annika Kargerman, our morning anchors, called One New York. Every single day, 9 o'clock, we talk, we kvetch, we talk about what's going on uh, in our city right now, which is, geez, a heck of a lot, obviously. All right, let's talk about the One New York Awards and some of the great talents here. First off, let's start from Brooklyn, New York, Javier Panado. And that is an absolute, yeah, that's a beautiful, oh, wow. Look at that one. That is perfect. I like the New York one logo there. Grover Gregory Ginta from Manhattan, which is where I am right now. Believe it or not, I've lived in four boroughs except Brooklyn. Don't kill me. Sorry. <laughs> My great grandmother lived in Scotty Island, though. I swear to God. A true story. My Uncle Irving had a soda shop at Mermaid Avenue. Miriam Rankin from Brooklyn. Wow. wow. I recognize a Bridge a little bit. Uh, Dolly Dharma from Parts Unknown. Parts Unknown, which is, was that like an old wrestler who was from Parts Unknown? I can't remember who it was. Susie Sims Fletcher from Astoria, Queens, which is where I did most of my growing up. There you go. Perfect. And finally, last but not least, John Delaney from Toms River, New Jersey, down the shore, as we say. That's right. Down the shore, everything's all right. Who said that? And here we go, guys. The winners are in third place. It is Grover Gregory 
and Ginkta and the five boroughs one love mask. Absolutely gorgeous. Way to go, hey, bro. Hey Roger. Yeah. They entered they entered five times with that mask with people all over the city. Smart strategy. That is well, that's the way to go. That's this guy should go to Vegas. He'd be all right. <laughs> as soon as it opens up. Uh second place, Miriam Rankins, Brooklyn Bridge Me. Absolutely splendid. I was just driving over that bridge the other day, and I remembered this is the best bridge in the entire planet. Thank you. Sorry. And finally, first place. But it is go, actually, the, it is the best bridge in the entire planet. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Lori. Or somebody, somebody said that. Finally, first place, Susie, Sims, Fletcher, and Monumental from Astoria, Queens. Susie, you around? You want to say a few words? Oh, yeah, hey, that's cool. Yeah, it's the Statue of Liberty crown. That's really cool. I like Before that. Before I take this off, I want to show you. If you wear different sunglasses, you can make it go up or down. <laughs> um, I was addicted to this contest, as many of you know. And I just kept making them because it was uh, a break from making the regular masks to make for um, frontline people. But... Um, Anyway, uh, what I want to tell you about this is I literally made it at 11 o'clock at night when they were due at, due, I'm a teacher, uh, they were due at midnight. And so this fabric came from material for the arts. They donated it. And a lot of this fabric um, went to first responders too. So anyway, yeah, uh-oh, uh-oh, those aren't the sunglasses that I want. There you go. Thanks, you guys. Yay! You're Susie so great. Let's go for it, guys. Here we go. Right. Oh, for you. Let me just say that Susie is not kidding about being the biggest fan of this contest. She is the biggest fan. <laughs> is. <laughs> and I think even I was heavily vested in it. I think she's more vested in it. Let's hear it for Susie. Hey, Susie. Good job, Susie. Susie. I loved it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, oh, Susie. Yay. And thank you so much for the one, Roger Clark. Susie. Now, our next presenter hey, is known as a defender of Bell our civil liberties. Was it not? A helper of the underdog and a master of the law. Apparently, he's also a bit out of his mind thanks to post root canal drugs. But even when altered, he still believes in the power of the people. So who better to present the award voted on by the general public? Next up is Ron Kuby with the People's Choice Award. Very famous lawyer. Yeah. Hey. Hope you're feeling bad. Well, thank you, everybody. I'm very happy to be here, and I'm going to take my brief introductory time to tell you that the homemade mask has a special place in New York legal history. Many of you didn't know this. The year was 1845, and there was a general uprising of tenant farmers throughout New York, mostly in the Delaware uh, area, the, the Delaware County area, and they would make masks or their wives would make masks. They would dress up in those masks and calico dresses and other things, and they would go upon the road attacking rent collectors. The rent collectors uh, on behalf of the landlords who basically held them in peonage. So successful were these attacks on the rent collectors on behalf of the people that the New York State Legislature got together and did what they do best. They passed a law against wearing masks in public, except at permitted mask events. And that law, ladies and gentlemen, is still on the books today and was used in the 1990s by then Mayor Rudy Giuliani against anarchist protesters. So we've made so much progress. Uh, it is now my pleasure to announce the six nominees for the People's Choice Award. First up, Melissa Lawson from Astoria, New York. Oh, that's a beauty. Jan Livingston, Rutherford, New Jersey. Another stunning mask. Love you, Jan. Uh, yeah. Susie Sims Fletcher once again from Astoria. 
Yes. From Brooklyn, the Tail Shakers. Yeah. And out of Bay Ridge, Jen Green. Oh, that is lovely. Oh, how do we make the decision? Last up, Karen Robb, or Robbe, from Houston, Texas. Ah, loving that medieval doctor look. And the winners are third place, the Tail Shakers under the mask. Woo! Oh, good job, third place. Yeah. Second place, Jen Green in her ice cream cone mask. Nice job, hey, Jen. 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 That is awesome. Looks good enough to eat. And in first place, once again, Susie Sims Fletcher, hot dog mask. Good job, yeah. Susie. Ah! Yeah. yeah, look at you. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. You rule. Ah! Okay, so hot dog. <laughs> my, my neighbors all heard me coming up with this while we were socially distancing. This is all fabric that came from mask making too. And I'll start to cry to tell you this back. Fabric here was sent to me by a mask maker in uh, Texas that I've known for about 30 years. And it says, I love you to the moon and back. And I made um, scrub cap to give to our very good friend, Shiny, who's working in the ER at Elmhurst out of that same fabric. And I wanna point out that um, he has one gold tooth because he's saving for a grill. <laughs> Get it? He's saving for it. Okay. Anyway, yay! 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 Everybody cheer once again for Susie. Yay! Yay! Susie! 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 Hey, uh, can you guys hear me? Chris T, voice of the Mermaid Parade. I just want to say Ron Kuby in episode two of Trial by Media on Netflix now, Subway Vigilante, Bernhard Getz episode. Ron Kuby is all over that episode. And uh, of course, as always, on the right side. Thank you, Ron. So, Thank you. So Susie, I have a question for you, Susie. How many countries did you solicit votes in the People's <laughs> Choice Awards? <laughs> I do some work around the world and I keep those people. Um, and uh, I was up to 15 countries, including Bhutan, Brazil, um, Costa Rica. I had India, um, Thailand, um, I, I can Canada, uh, of course, the United States, but um, Bhutan was a little tricky because you guys wouldn't take her phone number or her email address <laughs> or something. But, um, People literally from around the world were, were chipping in for, for hot dog. Hot dog! All right, let's hear it for her one more time. Now, Woo! I just want to also say that Woo! the second and third place That's winners, Jen Green Robert. and the Tail Shakers, they were within they were within two votes of each other for the entire time. It was amazing, like just right next to each other. But Susie, I, I told you, you that was really close. You were in front the entire time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're going to go on now to the big one. And I might get teary here because I've been really working hard on this. And to see the real win the, the winners of the best in show, it's, it's really important to me. Um, so it is now my pleasure to announce the six nominees for best in show. Our first nominee, Little Brooklyn, Allison Garber. Look at that mask. Hand-painted sideshow mask, unbelievable. Beautiful. Second place, I'm second nominee, sorry, is Michael Moffitt, indeterminate location, but probably <laughs> Florida. Mike <laughs> is an incredible artist. He does so many things. When you look at his work, sometimes you can't tell if it's reality, Photoshop, but in fact, it's all real, it's all photographed. I recommend you look up this artist, he's fantastic. Third nominee, once again, 
Adrian ben Benjamin from Isle, Minnesota. Adrian, just an amazing artist. Fourth nominee, Melissa Lawson. We saw her earlier too. Melissa's from Astoria, New York. Just incredible artist. Fifth nominee, Anthony Whittaker, our 911 first responder. If you look closely at that mask, he has, in, he has embroidered on it all kinds of really interesting messaging to himself. It's kind of like a tattoo, that mask. And our last nominee is Leah Tenari from the East Village where I live. Let's hear from Leah. Mm -hmm. Great mask. And the Great winners mask. are in third place, Leah Tenari with her World War I prosthetic mask homage. Leah, this mask is unbelievable. I think, I think it would have won people's choice if people could tell it was a mask. It's really remarkable. Um, those of you who watched, um, I think it was Boardwalk Empire, there was an example of a World War I prosthetic mask. Just a great work, Leah. Second place. Allison, little Brooklyn Garber from Brooklyn and yeah. the Sancho Banner Mask. Good job, Allison. Love it. And the winner, the final Best in Show. Well, I'm waiting for my computer to crash again. The Best mm. in Show is Melissa Lawson with the Mermaid Queen, Woo! formerly known as Ben Salmon. She changed her mind. Oh. Let's hear it for Melissa. Yeah. Woo! Woo! Lisa, you're a goddess. You're incredible. Proud of you. Yeah. I just want to thank everyone that puts together this parade. The joy that I feel. I'm gonna get one. Congrats. I feel at this parade is amazing, and I appreciate that everyone puts together this parade. And I'm gonna start crying because I'm a little bit drunk, but I appreciate it. That's the only way. Thank you. Well, listen, you know, I cry easy. Please don't do that. <laughs> Thank you so much. You are an overwhelming favorite. Your work was amazing. You should be really proud of it. Um, and unfortunately, that brings us to the end of the awards portion of the ceremony. But before we close, I want to say thanks to all of you. You brought light to the darkness, fun to an incredibly unfun time, and you did it all while encouraging health. But wait. There's more. I hinted that there might be a mermaid parade announcement tonight. Yeah. Well, here to talk about that is the beach bum that the New York Times recently called a hardcore New Yorker. Ladies and gentlemen, again, say hello to Dick Sigan. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Throw I've me been some popcorn. Fun time at this party. I love you, Dick. Yes, you did. Hi, Dick. Popcorn for everyone. My favorite, Dick. Wait, wait. Hi, do Dick. I really Hi, have to do this? How this are is you? hard. Hi, sweetie. Um, mm -hmm. They asked me to try and explain what happened to the mermaid parade. Oh, this is hard. Okay. Let me try and explain it. It's a little convoluted. You've all been drinking, so that will make this easier. As most of you know, the 38th annual Mermaid Parade is supposed to be held on the summer solstice, June 20th. But something happened. And some people, as far as I can tell from the Russian government, told us we couldn't do a parade. So we had a secret meeting with the prime minister of New Zealand and tried to pull off a secret parade. But as you know, history took over and black lives really do matter. So, well, with that explanation, well, I am here to announce that do I really have to do this <laughs> on June 20th I was having so much fun at this party on June 20th Mark wrote these lines these are not my lines That's why I we will be gone. on June 20th on June 20th the summer solstice we will be hosting 
not the Mermaid Parade. But what did you think? We won't jeopardize your health or safety. I'm a little bit sorry to say. Um, but it is the right thing to do. But the June 20th event, which we have dubbed not the Mermaid Parade, there will be a super online happening, much better than this one tonight because we learned how to make all the mistakes tonight. Um, on June 20th, not the Mermaid Parade, there will be incredible acts curated by the great Adam Realman. There will be special appearances and more. But as you can tell from the name, this will not on June 20th be the Mermaid Parade. So convoluted. Did I adequately explain what's up with the Mermaid Parade? As Probably clear not. as mud. Does anybody think sick. I've explained anything? No. So on June 20th, at not the Mermaid Parade, we will make another special announcement, much like this announcement. Except on the 20th, we will finally, on June 20th, reveal our actual plans for the 2020 Mermaid Parade, which unfortunately will not be a secret parade in New Zealand. Uh, but this new idea that we'll talk about on June 20th, you don't want to miss it. So don't miss the announcement about not the Mermaid Parade on June 20th. Um, keep following us on social media or at ConeyIsland.com slash state slash mass slash Mermaid Parade. It's all there at ConeyIsland.com. I hope you had as much fun as we did. Be safe. Put your mask back on. Party on. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Good times. Thank you. Hey, everybody. everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for coming. And please, you're all welcome to hang around a little bit. I am wearing my birthday suit under my judge's robe. There might be a little some entertainment later. So please, I encourage everybody to hang out if you'd like to. Woo. I'm sure it's going to be cacophonous and completely unusable. Woo. If you want, I could set up some rooms, but whatever. So thank you, Mark. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mark. 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 Thank you, Mark.